It's release day. Let's promote some music. Hey, it's John here at Hyped In. It's one of my favorite days in the month. It's release day. I have a new song out today and I just showered. I've just had my breakfast. I opened my computer and it's now time to launch the promotion campaign for my new song. It's something that I usually do on the morning of the release. And so I'm excited to talk to you about how I'm gonna promote this song. My number one way of getting more listeners and streams and fans on Spotify for me music is using Facebook and Instagram ads. That's the one thing I'm fully focused on because they allow me to put my music in front of diehard fans that then come over into Spotify to check out my music. So I contrast that to playlist promotion, for example. If I put my music on a playlist, I might pick up lots of listeners and streams, but those are from music fans and listeners who are not there for my music, right? They are there for the playlist. And yes, my song might stream as part of them listening to the playlist, but most of these are passive listeners. They usually check out these playlists when they are driving in their car, they might be at work, they might be at the gym working out, they might be at home cooking, whatever they're doing, but they're not there for my music. And that's why they are not usually highly engaged and passionate fans. Whereas with music ads, I can present my music on Facebook and Instagram and give those music fans who really love the way I introduce the song to them on those platforms, a reason to come over to Spotify. And that means they are there only for the song. The only reason why they open Spotify in that moment is because they wanted to check out my song, my music, and they wanted to check me out as an artist. And that means they are super engaged. They're very likely to stream multiple of my songs. They are very likely to like the song, to start following me all of which are positive signals to Spotify that then help get the music even more exposure through algorithmic playlists. To me, Facebook and Instagram, it's a brilliant platform when it comes to music promotion. And it's where I like to invest my promotion dollars over any other promo method. Now running Facebook and Instagram ads used to be a very complicated process, but one of my most limited resources is time. And that's why me and the team at Hyped It, we've been working on automating this as much as possible. So I'm just gonna take a few minutes here, launch my promo campaign for my new song, and then it's gonna be up and running and I'll see new listeners, fans, and streams coming in. I am excited about that already. I'm gonna start off in Spotify here. So you can see, uh, I'll be there. That's the new release. That song is just dropping today. It's a single. It actually has two versions on it, a short version and a long version. That's because I make electronic dance music and DJs prefer the long version so they can mix them into each other. But the one that I'm gonna promote on Spotify is the short version because short versions are more likely to get repeat streams, right? I'd love to keep my songs these days around two minutes. I'd even see artists that very strategically try to bring in their songs about 1.30 to two minutes. Again, Spotify has made it more beneficial to have shorter songs. All it really needs to be is longer than 30 seconds because that's when Spotify counts a stream for you. But once a listener has passed those 30 seconds of your song, really you get the most benefit if they stream the song again. So you wanna keep it short. You wanna give them reason to repeat stream the song because they love it so much and they wanna spend more time with your sound. And if they do, that's how you pick up repeat streams. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this song to one of my playlists because I love promoting my songs on my own playlist. That's one of the best ways to turn every listener into many, many streams. So I'm gonna go to add to playlist here and I'm gonna add this to my This Is John Gold playlist. That's the playlist over here. And what I wanna point out is that this is not a playlist Spotify made for me. This is a playlist I made myself. You can see this here that my account is the owner of this playlist. And this is where I'm sending my promo traffic. And the good thing about doing this with the playlist that you own is you can decide where on the playlist certain tracks go, right? You control the content of the playlist. And this playlist, by the way, doesn't have to be called This Is John Gold. This could just as well be called John Gold Essentials or Best Of John Gold. I just like it to be the theme of me as an artist because that explains why it has only my music on it and keeps listeners on there who wanna discover a little bit more music from that artist, in this case, from me. But I wanna make one more change here because the song was added to the bottom of the playlist and I don't want it at the bottom of the playlist. I wanna bring it in a little bit higher. Beat of My Heart, which is the first track on the playlist, is currently my most successful track, both in terms of promo campaigns and algorithmic pickup. So I'm not gonna impact that track, but I'm gonna move 
I'll be there into the second position of the playlist. Really for the promo campaigns, it doesn't matter that much where on the playlist it goes because the way I'm gonna run the promo campaign is gonna send the traffic straight to that song on this playlist, no matter where it is. But people who save the playlist and then come back to listen to the songs and don't have their Spotify player set up for shuffle, meaning they listen to the playlist in the order of songs, I want them to hit I'll be there very early so that it picks up the most possible listeners and streams. In this early phase of the release, we're trying to get the popularity score up as much as we can in order to trigger the algorithmic playlist, such as Discover Weekly or a bigger release radar in Spotify radio as soon as possible so that that gives the song just a distance lift on top of the promo campaign that I'm running. Now while I'm here, also gonna like the song, right? Why not? Getting an additional like surely sends a good signal to Spotify. All right, with this said here, I've done everything I needed to do in order to launch my promo campaign on Spotify. Just added the song to my own playlist. So now I'm gonna come over to Hype That. This is where I'm going to launch and manage the campaign because I'm gonna be able to take advantage of Hype That's music ad automation. I spoke about that a little bit earlier. Facebook and Instagram ads are extremely powerful, but they're also fairly complex. And what me and my team have built into the software here is an ability to quick launch and easily manage these campaigns out of Hyped It. And the reason why I'm particularly excited to launch a new campaign for the song today is that my last song that I released last month here, which is this one, Velvet Sky, hasn't performed as well as I want it. And I want to talk about this real quick because it's so easy in these YouTube videos to always share what works and how amazing the success stories are. But I think it's also fair to also show that sometimes a song doesn't do that well, right? So for example, this song here, Velvet Sky, has been out for a little over a month and the engagement rate is only a little over 20%. That's not where I love to see it. I want to be at least north of 40%. And the cost per click here is 45 cents. That's high compared to my best performing campaigns. For songs that perform really well for me, I see numbers that are more in the neighborhood of 20 cents per click, sometimes even a little bit below, sometimes a little bit higher, but more sort of in that neighborhood. Now, obviously all of this is also a function of the countries to which I promote my music. So this doesn't always translate to every other song, every other artist and every other promotion. But what's happening in my case is that usually I target the same set of countries I target the same set of interests of sounded like artists. And so really it comes down to the performance of the song. And even though I'm super excited about every new song that I release, and to me that oftentimes feels like it's one of the best songs that I've made, the reality is my fans and the listeners don't always agree. And the truth is that Velvet Sky just fell flat, right? So the song was not a good enough song, which is on me. It's not on the promo campaign. The promo campaign was set up correctly and it did what it was supposed to do. But if the song just doesn't bring it, then it shows in the results. So I'm very excited to launch this new song today. Hopefully that one will do better. Hopefully that's gonna be another winner. And with this spirit of hope, let's do this. Let's launch the campaign. So I'm logged into Hyped. I'm looking at my dashboard. I'm on the ads campaigns tab here. And all I gotta do is click the green plus icon over here. And this is where I see all the promotion templates available for Hyped. It. You know, lots of them for Spotify, some for YouTube. There's even something for emails here. But the one that I wanna use today is this one here, Grow My Spotify Playlist, because this one gives me the best combination of growing the song and growing my playlist at the same time. And the reason why I love growing my playlist, you can see this one here, it's over 50,000 likes now, is that whenever I have new music, I can add it to the playlist. And just by adding it to a playlist that already has 50,000 followers on it, and lots of these followers frequently come and check out the playlist again, I get exposure for this new song. So the playlist that I own and that I build a following on is just a phenomenal promotional asset that I own, that I control, and that I can put new music on at any point in time. All right, so I'm looking for this double whammy of growing the song and growing the playlist at the same time. And that's what I'm getting with this Grow My Spotify Playlist template. So I'm just gonna click Select here. First, I gotta connect Facebook. I did this before, so I'm already connected, but I have my Facebook fan page selected here. I gotta select my Instagram account here. Facebook ad account, pixel, everything's filled in. Perfect, let's go next. Now, Hype is asking me for the playlist URL. So I'm gonna come over here 
And I'm gonna go share, copy link to playlist. I wanna bring this into Hypedit. Enter it here. All right, cool, that's accepted. Now Hypedit wants the Spotify URL of the song on this playlist to promote. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna give Hypedit the link to the song. And I'm gonna put this in. Bam, so Hypedit automatically imports the artist name, the song title, the cover art. It's asking me for the genre of the track. So in this particular case here, Deep House comes closest. Look. This list here has primarily higher level genres. So if you ever do this for your own song and you're thinking, why, wow, you know, my song is old school piano house music, right? Which is mine here. You won't be able to find this. So just go for the genre. That's the next best umbrella genre where the niche genre that you're in falls under. All right, so deep house it is for me. So and I'm gonna go next. Now it's time to create the ads. And the ads basically consist of cover art and then the audio. Now, oftentimes you hear this kind of feedback, John, you know, just the cover art, it's so boring. Like, why shouldn't I upload a full motion video? Actually, you know, we shot this amazing video that we have on YouTube. Can I use that for my ads? And the answer is, sure you can. The reason why I like the static cover art with the music is that Spotify is a music only experience, right? So if a music fan comes over to Spotify and they play a track, they don't see a fancy video. All they see is the cover art and they listen to the song. And my goal with these ads is to attract people into Spotify. So what I'm trying to do with the way I'm setting up these ads is I'm trying to mimic the experience that is on Spotify, which is static cover art, listening to music. I don't want to dazzle their eyes with an amazing music video in the ad that could potentially leave them disappointed when they're coming to Spotify, because really what they wanted to do is see the, the full music video, which obviously they can't on Spotify. They would have to then leave Spotify, maybe hop into YouTube, try to find the full video over there. I don't want that happening. I want people to be sticky on Spotify, and that's why my preferred way of running these ads is really with a quote unquote boring static cover art. We're just gonna spice it up a little bit by adding a video effect. And we're doing this so that if music fans, you know, are on their device and scrolling, we have this image just pop a little bit more for them. So I opened up the effects gallery here, and if I hover over these effects here, I can see what they look like. I can pick any and add any that I like, because this cover art here is this woman at the beach. I'm gonna use the light leak. I think that matches the scene that the cover art shows here uh, very well. And by the way, this image was rendered out of Mid Journey. What you can do with Mid Journey these days just blows my mind. So no longer did I have to invest lots of time going through stock footage and seeing something that I like. I was literally able to create this in Mid Journey with two or three prompts. All right, on to the next step here. Now let's upload the music. I'm gonna drag the full song into Hyped It over here, drop it, and let this upload real quick. What Hyped It's gonna do is it's gonna prepare a waveform of the song, and based on the waveform, it'll give me the option to select three different audio snippets of the song each being 30 seconds long. And this is remarkably easy because all I have to do is move this slider around and whenever I find a part of the song that I want to use for my ad, all I have to do is hit create video. The reason why I'm cutting 30 second snippets out of the song is that in my ad, I don't want to give away the full song. If somebody loves the song when they discover it on Facebook and Instagram, but they were able to listen to the full song right then and there, I would give them very little reason to come over into Spotify and check out the full song there. So instead, I'm thinking about the music that I wanna go with the ad, kind of like a movie trailer to a full length feature film, right? I just wanna tease some of the best moments of the song to somebody so that after 30 seconds, it leaves them hanging and they can't help but go over into Spotify to just check out the full song. Now, because I'm recording this video on my computer right now with the microphone plugged in, when I move this around here and play the audio, you won't be able to hear this. So I'm gonna fast skip over this. But the key takeaway here is that if you set up a campaign like this for any of your own songs, you wanna make sure that some of the most exciting moments of the song are at the beginning of that 30 second snippet. So let's say for example, let's say this was one of the most exciting moments in the song. I wouldn't wanna cut it like this. I wanna cut it like this. I wanna make sure that the audience hears the most exciting parts of the song at the beginning of the audio preview. The average length of people listening to videos or watching videos on Facebook, I think it's only like four to five seconds. So we gotta wow the audience right in the beginning to give them a reason to care 
and listen longer and then eventually go over into Spotify. So with that said, let me cut the three snippets for I'll Be There. All right, I'm back. I selected three different audio snippets from the song and these are being rendered into videos right now where it includes the cover art, the video effect and the music and uh, I'll be able to preview those in just a couple seconds here. So um, in the meantime, we're gonna go next. Countries, the default selection is tier one and two countries. That's where I like to start. That's why I've seen the best results. So I'm not gonna change anything here. I'm just gonna go next. Now in this next section here, this is where I can tell Facebook and Instagram where to find fans that are most likely to love my music. And the way this process works is that it starts out with identifying three to 10 sound alike artists. So I'm gonna use Mark Knight for this. Here's Mark Knight. I'm gonna use Low Stepper. Here's Low Stepper. And I'm gonna use Bob Sinclair. Bob Sinclair has done great for me. So there he is. So I entered three. And now all I'm gonna do is click on generate interest. And this is when Hypedit goes out and the algorithm does a bunch of things and comes back with a set of targetable interests on Facebook that the system recommends will give you the best results. So this one came back here with Deep House as a genre match, Bob Sinclair, Mark Knight, Eric Prides, and Sebastian Grosso. I do like all of those, so I'm not gonna change anything. I'm gonna accept this selection here and just click next. Budget is $5 a day. This is where I like to start. I could go higher, but in the initial phase of launching a new campaign, this is when it's learning. This is when the algorithm's trying to figure out the best match between the ad creative and the audience. So I'd rather keep some of my budget in my back pocket. And once the campaign is going through the optimization phase, that's when I increase this. Now you might be wondering, John, how long is that optimization phase? And the rule that I apply for myself is I'm never gonna kill an ad until it's run at least four weeks. So I'm gonna let this campaign run four weeks without making any changes to it. And this is when I will evaluate how well it's performing. And the reason why this is so important is that sometimes the initial performance of an ad can be deceiving. The campaign for the best song that I have right now, right? The campaign for Beat On My Heart has generated hundreds of thousands of streams for the song, started off as a terrible campaign. The results after the first week were so bad that I was close to turning this campaign off because I didn't think that campaign and the song had it in them. But I reminded myself, hey, you wanna give it enough time. You wanna make sure there can be enough learning applied by the algorithm and by the AI. And even I was shocked that after three weeks, this campaign was on fire. And after four weeks, it was one of the best campaigns that I got in recent years. And so that's really important. Don't judge a campaign by the result you're getting on the first day, the second day, the third day, or even after the first week, right? You can even think about this way, right? These campaigns are learning, they are self-learning, they're self-improving. So the worst day of your campaign is likely gonna be the first day, and the second worst day is gonna be the second day, and the third worst day is gonna be the third day. The best day is likely gonna be the final day of the campaign. Now I know this is you know a little simplified, and you know sometimes the performance goes up and down a little bit, so it doesn't translate 100%, but conceptually, in the beginning of a campaign where it has the least amount of data, it can do the optimal job of getting you maximum results but as more data is coming in and it learns more about the music fans within that audience that really loved your song and came over into Spotify, that's when the campaign just get better and better and better and hits that sweet spot where you're getting the maximum results for your budget. But you gotta be able to sit it out for at least three, four weeks in order to see sort of the true results that that campaign can deliver. So when I launch, I do with a mindset that I'm not gonna touch this for at least a month. And I would recommend the same for you if you wanna give this a shot. So $5 a day it is. All I'm gonna do is next. There are some advanced settings here, but I'm gonna skip those because the best results usually come from the default settings. So I'm not gonna touch this. It brings me right to the confirmation summary. These are all the settings here that I made. I'm just gonna confirm that I'm ready to launch. Then I'm gonna click here, save as a draft. Oh, and one thing I forgot, I wanted to show you the video. So let's click on the video here right now. You can see that it's the cover art, but now it has this light effect on it. So I really like how that came out. That looks great. All right, so ready to launch. 
So let me click here and publish the campaign now. Now this is when Hyped It goes out and connects to Facebook Ads Manager, it uploads the music ad, it sets all the targeting, the pixels, the conversion events, the placements, like all the gazillion settings that go into a Facebook ad campaign that successfully works for music are now being made automatically by the software. And that eliminates the potential for error, right? Which makes it so awesome. I don't have to worry about whether in the gazillions of settings that I had to make, I made, a, I made a mistake somewhere. All right, it's wrapping it up right now. And that's it. I got a success message here. Woohoo, your ad campaign is published. And that means the campaign is now set up inside my Facebook Ads Manager account and it's ready to go live. Now, the last step that is gonna happen here is that Facebook and Instagram, they review the ad creatives that get posted on their platform. And that's because they wanna make sure that everything posted on the network adheres to their terms. But obviously, I'm not concerned about this ad. This is gonna get approved. It's just a matter of whether, you know, it takes a few minutes or maybe a few hours, and then this ad is going to deliver. Which means today on release day, I'm going to get new listeners, new fans, and new streams for the song because I just launched this campaign. To me, it's exciting because now I can focus on other things, right? So I basically got the main promotion campaign for this new release all set, and that's all I'm gonna do for the next four weeks in order to promote the song, right? I'm gonna let the ad campaign do its magic, and then I'm gonna come back and evaluate it, especially against other campaigns for some of my older songs that I'm running. And with this said, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to hit the like, the subscribe, the bell icon below, so you can get more videos like this on YouTube on how to reach and get more listeners, more streams, and more fans for your music on Spotify. And if you have music on Spotify that you wanna get more listeners, more streams, and more fans for, you can obviously follow the steps that I shared with you in this video. I didn't leave anything out. You can literally follow this click by click and get one of your campaigns up and running right away. And for those of you who want to even dive a little bit deeper and discover how to scale from a first campaign into a set of campaigns that eventually can accelerate your music to tens of thousands of listeners and millions of streams, then I'm breaking down the process that I've taken to do this with my own music inside a video training program that's called the Spotify Grow Switch. I talk about how to set up campaigns, how to manage multiple campaigns, and how to build that machine that can just accelerate the growth of all the music that you have on Spotify. So if this is something you're interested in, then here's more information about it. Wanna get your music heard on Spotify with AI? I just launched a brand new video training program called the Spotify Grow Switch, where I show you how to start growing real listeners, real fans, and real streams on Spotify in less than 10 minutes using software and AI. I've used the Spotify Grow Switch system to now grow my music to over 7 million streams and tens of thousands of monthly listeners on Spotify. This works for any music genre. It gets you real fans and listeners super fast and it's extremely easy to set up, literally just like flipping a spotlight switch for your music. Despite using AI, you don't need to know nothing about tech stuff in order to be successful with this. I've had the tremendous privilege of helping multiple tens of thousands of music artists grow their music on Spotify, many of which have grown to much larger numbers, lots more listeners, lots more streams than I have using the systems that I've taught. Makes me so proud of their success. And so if you wanna get more real listeners, real fans and real streams for your music fast using state of the art software and AI, then click the link below this video and check out the Spotify Grow Switch. I can't wait to help you grow your music on Spotify and I look forward to seeing you on the inside.